In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come reign on earth, fiat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So here we are on 20, volume 20, 11, 23, 19, 26. Now, the divine, the, the son of my divine will, its sphere is not limited, and therefore it possesses its full day. So here Jesus is showing us it's not the sun in the sky, but the son of the divine will. Therefore, the soul who lives in the divine will, this is Louisa, and now God's calling us to, it embraces all times, all generations, and investing the acts of everyone, past, present, and future. Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa forms one single act, one single love, and one single glory for her creator. But do you know what this son of my supreme will is formed of? My divine attributes, Jesus says. They are the rays of the sun that, throw, though different among themselves in their qualities and in their office, they hold, uh, they are light in their substance. And my divine will is the combining light that assumes all these lights together it is the director of all my divine attributes. So that that's, God is asking us to enter into this life that Adam had, uh, to enter the true life of Jesus, the new Adam, and true life of Mary, the new Eve. So he says this, 520, 12, 6, 1926. Now Adam, in the state of innocence, in the height of, in the height of the sovereign queen, the blessed mother, by possessing my divine will, if they loved, in that love, they enclosed ador uh, divine adoration, divine glory, divine praise, divine blessing, divine prayer. Nothing was missing in their littlest acts. Uh, in, in it flowed the multiplicity of divine qualities of the single act of my supreme volition that made them embrace everything. And so in one act, uh, this is Adam before he fell and the Blessed Mother, they gave to their creator whatever befitted God. So if they loved, they adored. If they adored, they loved. Isolated acts that do not embrace all acts together cannot be called perfect. They are meager acts that gives of human will. Therefore, only in the fiat can the soul find true perfection in her acts and offers a divine act to her God. So, so as Jesus says, you're kneeling in front of the Blessed Sacrament and you're adoring in the divine will, you are loving God. 
as you're loving God, you're adoring God. It's, it's everything's together. Everything becomes perfect. It's, it, you're, you're going to experience this. Um, you're going to experience uh, from a divine perspective uh, things that you never could imagine before. Why? Jesus is explaining it to you. And as he explains it to you, he expands your capacity to understand this. Not not completely, but it's, again, it's a little glimpse, a little glimpse. It's He keeps on expanding our capacity as you read, as you study, as you put this into practice. Volume 20, 211, 1927. My daughter, these strings are symbols of the soul in whom the divine will reigns. I myself delight in forming them and arranging them all in order. Look how beautiful they are. Each string has a distinct color infested with light in such a way that all together they form the most beautiful rainbow, all radiant with divine light. But do you want to know why each string has its distinct color? Because each one of them symbolizes one of God's divine qualities, that is, God's divine attributes. So I, God, place everything in order, the string of love, the string of goodness, the string of power, of mercy, of strength, of wisdom, of purity, and some everything I have not excluded, even the string of justice. See, we, we surrender to divine justice. This is, this is one thing that's very, very important. We're going to get what we deserve. <laughs> That's really painful to say. We're going to get what we deserve. But when we surrender to God's justice, he says, I give you my mercy. See, that's the thing. It's, it's not to run away from God, but to stand and say, I get what I deserve. And God says, okay, you trust me? And we go, what else, what else am I going to do? He says, then I will give you my mercy. So uh, no one, no one can stand before God and live, basically. It's because of God's mercy, because of God's love. And, and this is what's happening. He says, um, the divine qualities is what God wants us to enter into and participate in. Therefore, every time I, God, want to place one of my divine attributes in office, I touch the string that belongs to it. And I place it in attitude. But do you know why I've disposed all these strings in you, Louisa? Because whenever my divine will reigns, I, God, want to find all of myself in all of these things that belong to me when I look at you, Louisa. In such a way that whenever I do, whatever I do in heaven, I must be able to do in you, Louisa, in whom the supreme fiat dominates and reigns. That's what God wants in us. None of us are close to that. None of us are even, none of us are close to it. But the more we read, the more we study, the more we put this into practice, the, the more we begin to be more like Jesus and Mary that Louisa possesses. That, that's what's so beautiful about Louisa. When you look at Louisa, you can see the true life of Jesus and the true life of Mary. And how she speaks. Read her letters. If you ever get discouraged, read her letters. They are they are so beautiful. She speaks directly to the soul, and uh, you can't you can't be miserable if you're reading the divine will. It's, it's impossible. Jesus is speaking to you. The Word is speaking to you, and as He speaks to you, everything changes within you. So Jesus says this to Louisa and to us. I must have my throne. I must have my melodies. So to be able to vibrate the sound of my mercy to convert souls, the sound of wisdom to make myself known, the sound of my power and justice to make myself feared. Now, what are we afraid? We're afraid to sin. We don't, we don't want to offend God. The fear of God is not wanting to sin, not to offend him. I must be able to say, Jesus says, here is my heaven. When we live in the divine will, Jesus is going to say, this is my heaven. As a matter of fact, he says, the little children of the holy divine will, when they get to heaven, they're going to have a new name. He's going to point to, he's going to say to the angels, see, see that one over there? And he's going to give us a new name. And the new name, he says, is my fiat. There is my fiat. And there is my fiat. There is my fiat. 
in all different categories, as he says here, all different melodies. See, we are, we are called by God to become a divine masterpiece. He says, this is what he's, this is what he's planned from the beginning. Not a human masterpiece, a divine masterpiece. I am 21, 2, 23, 19, 27. Moreover, since all our divine qualities as though it's spread in creation and each created thing occupies one office of our attributes, so one is the child of our power. One is the child of our justice. One is the child of our light. One is the child of our peace. One is the child of our goodness. In sum, each created thing is a child of each one of our divine attributes. And when you bring me the whole of creation, this is the rounds, when we pray the rounds of creation, you are the bearer of my divine happiness that is spread within it. And I, God, recognize my child of light in the sun, my child of justice in the sea, my child of justice in the empire of the wind, my child of peace in the flowery earth. In some, in all created things, I, God, recognize each birth from my divine attributes, and I, God, as God, enjoy in recognizing my children, whom the little daughter of the divine will, Luisa Picaretta, will bring to me. Who brings us to Jesus in the divine will? It is Luisa. That's what Jesus is telling us. Who is this Luisa Picaretta that's going to bring all the little children of the holy divine will to Jesus, to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Who is, who is this? Psalm 21, 526, 1927. What did the paternal goodness of the creator not do at creation for the love of man? In the sea, he would let himself be found as the strong God to give him strength. In the wind, he would let himself be found ruling and dominating to give him rule and dominion. In some, in each created thing, God waited for man to give him the participation in God's divine qualities. So that he waited for Adam to do his round of creation and to pray his round of creation. And now God waits for us to do our prayers and the rounds of creation, rounds of redemption. Volume 22, 626, 1927. And everything that can be seen in creation is nothing other then the outpouring of the abundance of divine light, divine heat, divine freshness, divine beauty, divine strength that we triune God possess within ourselves. And these outpourings were released by us triune God in order to nourish and delight souls with our own outpourings. These are divine outpourings. These aren't human. The saints gave us, uh, uh, showed us how to do virtues, how to live in virtu- a virtuous life. Jesus is saying, in the divine will, I want you to begin to live a divine life. That's what the priest says every day at Holy Mass. May we share in divinity. It's happening for the souls. In such a way as to render them happy in the din of nourishing self with our divine qualities, creatures would become similar to God, would be would be bearers of divine happiness and divine joys to their creator. What does Jesus say? I want to give you my joy that your joy may be complete. It's not human. Complete. How beautiful it was to see them luminous like sun, beautiful, more flowery fields and starry skies, strong like a mighty wind, pearled with divine freshness in such a way as to remain always fresh, new and fresh, without changing. Our divine will would bring each of them all our divine outpourings united together that are such uh, that one delights the other. And that, that's heaven. And so Jesus is saying, what I have planned, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. What I, what, what's coming to the earth is so magnificent. You know, um, uh, well, can you find words to say it? It's just, he's going to delight. We're going to delight in each and every one. But because Adam withdrew from the supreme fiat, Adam receives our outpourings as separate from one another. And this is why now the heat burns mankind. The light eclipses him. The cold makes him numb. The wind harms him. And many times it knocks him down and hurls him away. 
not seeing in mankind the facility of, I said this three times, of his creator, the bonds of union within the divine fiat, our divine quality acts as separate over him, and mankind does not receive the happiness that they contain united. Therefore, with my divine will, the creature, this is that's us, would have been happiest than the happiest being in the divine will. But without the divine will, the soul is the unhappiest. Worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin. That's our misery. And Jesus says, I don't want you to live like this anymore. I want you to live in my divine will. I want you completely happy. I am 22, 7, 21, 19, 27. My divine will empties the weight of nature. It's in its light. It removes the gloom of what is human. Human is misery. Human, the human condition is misery. Now you, you are happy when you make a good confession. Why? You are full of grace. You, you've left the misery and you're entering into grace, full of grace. How long do we stay like that? Half hour maybe? <laughs> and then you're back into sin, back into worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity. Jesus says, I want you to leave this. I want you to enter into a life of peace, joy, and happiness, a life of heaven. And that's why he says, the divine will empties the weight of nature, the human nature. It's light. It removes the gloom of what is human and renders the soul light. This light is capable of any sacrifice. And giving the soul wings of love, it gives the soul the first qualities of the celestial fatherland and knows neither oppression nor darkness, oppression or darkness, but daylight without sunlight, joy that never ends. When we're in the state of grace, we are filled with joy. But Jesus says, I want you to enter into life that never ends. Don't, he says, I'm going to make it possible for you to live without worry, fear, anxiety, complaints, negativity, and sin. When you enter into this gift, you will be filled with peace, joy, and happiness. That's what Jesus is saying. A joy that never ends. I will give you my joy and your joy will be complete. Find 22, 721, 1927. I think that's it. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, Peter. <laughs> Vine 23, 9, 28, 19, Okay. In order to comprehend this, it is enough to say that my divine volition was to form as many lives of itself for each soul, each creature. Therefore, it would place the whole of its ability and the infinite qualities it possessed in the excess of working. How beautiful these divine lives in the souls would have been. In looking at them, we, Triune God, were to find in each soul our reflection, our image, the echo of our divine happiness. What joy, what feast creation would have been for us and for all of mankind. But once Adam left, Jesus had to come to earth. Mary had to come to earth as the new Adam and the new Eve. Why? To redeem us. Why? So that we could be sanctified. Are the priest's words at mass, are they, are, they meaning, are they meaningful to you? We must share in the divinity of Christ. Do, do we understand what that means? That's what Jesus is saying here. We're going to share in divinity. But we have to pray for it, Jesus says. I have to give you what you want. Do you want this? So at Holy Mass, when the priest says, we, we are going to share in the divinity of Christ, as Christ humbled himself to share in our humanity, we should say, yes, I want this, Lord. Say it to the Lord. You don't have to yell it out. Don't cause any trouble. Say it in your heart. Lord, I want this. I want to share in your divinity. This is what you want, Lord. And it's already begun in Louisa. And it's begun little by little, step by step, uh, with, with souls who are reading. If you're not reading, you have no idea what God wants. He, he wants us to learn this. He wants us to, to understand this. 
523, 10 to 1927. Now you must know, this is a, this is a command from Jesus Christ. That Adam possessed such divine sanctity that when Adam was created by God and his acts were even the slightest, a blinking of an eye, had such value that no saint, either before or after my coming upon earth, Jesus says, can be compared to Adam's sanctity. All of their acts together, all of the saints' acts together, do not reach the value of one single act of Adam. Listen to that. All that the saints have done, all the martyrdoms, all the sufferings, all the mortifications that all the saints did combined cannot compare to one eye blink of Adam. Why? He was in God's image and likeness. Because in my divine will, Adam possessed the fullness of divine sanctity, the totality of all the divine goods. And do you know what fullness means? It means to be filled to the brim, to the point of overflowing with divine light, divine sanctity, divine love, and with all the divine qualities of God in such a way as to be able to fill both heaven and earth over which Adam had domination, he had dominion, and through which Adam's kingdom extended. Therefore, each one of Adam's acts done in the fullness of divine goods had such value that no one else, as much as he might sacrifice himself or suffer to do good and do good, but does not possess the kingdom by divine will and his total dominion can compare to one alone of these acts done by Adam in the kingdom of my divine will. And what does Jesus say to Louisa? You have to begin where Adam left off. What does that mean? You have to begin where Adam left off. Who is this Louisa Picaretta? Volume 23, 10, 6, 1927. My daughter, the one who operates in my divine will, works in my divine properties, and she forms her acts within my intermittable goods of light, goods of sanctity, goods of love, goods of happiness, without end. The acts are transformed into sons. These sons are produced by God's own divine qualities that have made themselves available for the act of the soul, for the soul's decorum, and so that these acts might be worthy of her God and might remain as perennial acts in God himself, glorifying God, loving God with his very divine acts. That's what Louisa does. And Jesus is offering that to us. This paragraph here, sit in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Look at Jesus in the monstrance. Read a line. Look at Jesus and say, help me understand this. Help me understand what you're calling me to. When you're in front of the Blessed Sacrament, don't just read. Read and look at God. Look at him and say, Lord, help me understand this. That's what Our Lady said when the angel said, you're going to be the mother of God. She says, how can this be? I, I want to please God, but I've already made a promise of virginity. I don't know man. And the answer said, it will be through the power of the Holy Spirit. And she said, fiat mihi, let it be done to me as you say. When you're in front of the Blessed Sacrament, when you're in front of the monstrance, fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with God. That's why you're there. That's why he called you. But everybody in the divine will should be spending time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Everybody. This is what God has planned. He's planned this. And if you can't make it to the church, and if there's no churches around, you've got the internet. Go to divine, divine, uh, no, go to savior.org and other places. You know, Peter had one from Poland. Go to these places and, and spend time with our Eucharistic Lord. Fall in love with our God. So Jesus continues. So before Adam sinned, Adam formed as many sons for his creator for as many acts as Adam did. Every eye blink, every breath, every heartbeat. That's what Jesus is teaching us. Now, the soul who lives and operates in my most holy divine will find these sons made by Adam. See, there's no time or space in the divine will. There's no time or space. 
You can be in Bethlehem. One of the things that God gave to Louisa, he says, the, the gift, the main, one of the main gifts I give to the souls of the divine will is by location. It's not the by location of the saints. It's to have Jesus take you to Bethlehem. Jesus take you to Golgotha. Jesus take you to Cana. Jesus take you to Capernaum. To be with Jesus. To see Jesus. So your memory has to be of him. Our intellect, we have to begin to think from a divine perspective. Our memory has to be of Jesus Christ. Who is our Lord, our Savior, our Master, our King, our God? And then our human will, we have to say, I I don't want to live in my human will any longer. I want to live in your most holy divine will, Lord. That's what I want. More than anything. So Jesus says, Jesus says, now, the one, the soul, who lives in my, our and operates in my, in my divine will, finds these sons made by Adam. And therefore, your whole commitment, listen to this, must be to follow the first acts of creation in the Garden of Eden. You see why when Louisa went out into the garden, he says, this is a simile of the Garden of Eden. I want you to be here. He wants us to be there. Do you have a little garden? Do you have a little room? Do you have a little chapel? That's your garden. What had why? To follow the first acts of creation. God wants you to know Genesis. To be with Adam in Genesis. And to take your work, your workplace near the last son, the last act that Adam did when he possessed the unity of the will with his creator. And then he says this to Luis and he says to us, you must make up for what Adam did not continue to do because he went out of my divine properties and his acts were no longer sons. Do you see what God is calling us to? In fact, Adam no longer had my divine qualities in his power that lent him themselves, uh, that lent themselves to let him form these sons at the most as goods they might as good as they might be his acts reduced them to being tiny little flames because the human will without my most holy divine will does not have the virtue of being able to form sons it lacks the raw materials so listen to this you must make up for all the other creatures your family your friends your neighbors your co-workers your parishioners who do not possess the unity of my divine will. So God has given us a mission. He's given us an office as he gave Louisa. It's it's to link ourselves with Louisa to learn how to do this. We're not going to be Louisa. Louisa didn't eat, drink, or sleep for 64 years. Louisa was crucified by Jesus every single day. We, we can't go through that. We have we have no no way that can we do that. But being linked to Louise so you can learn how to do this. Your work is great. Your work is long. You have much to do. Those are the words of Jesus. He's going to change the way you pray. He's going to change the way you think. He's going to change the way you act. This is all his, this is his plan. He's been waiting to do this from the beginning of time. He predestined each and every one of us to be here at this time because he's planned it. (laughs) We're part of his plan. You must, you have much to do in my endless boundaries. Therefore, be attentive and be faithful. This is what God is waiting for. What does it mean to be attentive? It means to read, read every day. Find something to read. I, I like the calendar. If you, if you want to do the hours of the passion, and a lot of people do them morning, noon, and evening. If you like the Virgin Mary in the kingdom, if you like be attentive, if you like uh, you must know, I mean, there's a whole bunch of things to, to study. I can't wait until the church gets into this. It's going to be glorious. Every There'll be libraries filled, filled with what Jesus said, how to begin to live this. We're, we're, we're just looking at this. And, and anyways, this is only part one. Part two is better than this. We're only in part one of the sixth step. 
it was so big. I wanted to say the seventh step, but then everybody would say, well, what's the seventh step? And there's no seventh step. It's the sixth step. But it's part A, part B. What's coming is magnificent. All that Jesus says is, would you, would you read? Would you take some time out of your day? Maybe not watch sports. Maybe not watch, you know, movies. Read. Watch what I will do. Watch what God's going to do. 523, 1023, 1927. My daughter, this act forming and infusing life in Adam with our omnipotent breath was so tender, so touching, and such a great joy for us triumph God that the whole of our divine being overflowed so much with love as to enrapture God's divine qualities with an enrapturing strength so to infuse them in Adam. In breathing over Adam, we, Triune God, poured everything into him. In blowing into Adam, we placed our supreme being in communication with Adam in such a way as to render Adam inseparable from God. That's sharing in divinity. That's what the priest says every day at Holy Mass. Inseparable from God. You see what, why God has allowed us to live at this time? These are the most exciting times in the history of the world. And why? The kingdom's coming. The triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary is coming. Everything is at hand. You have to understand this. Everything is ready. Everything is ready. And God wins. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to be anxious about. There's nothing to complain about. There's nothing to be negative about. There's nothing to doubt. God wins. And what is he doing? He's saying, I want you, that's you and I, to be alive today. To link yourself with Louisa and watch what I, God, am going to do. Watch what I, God, am going to do. Mark 23, 113, 1928. But our divine love is not content with having only one queen. That's the Blessed Mother. Nor was this our divine will in creation. Therefore, pouring itself out very strongly and releasing its contained waves, our divine love calls Louisa, this creature, and centralizes in Louisa the whole work of creation as it was placed in Adam. It pours upon her like pouring rain. It overflows with its divine qualities in order to have a second daughter queen. Why? To make Louisa form the foundation of the kingdom of our divine will. Why? So as to be able to have the retinue of our children, all kings, all queens. It's to be like Jesus. It's to be like Mary. Kings and queens of the earth. Adam was the king of the earth. Adam was the priest of the earth. Adam was the father of the earth. He lost it all. So Jesus comes as Christ the King. Jesus comes as the, 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 the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He comes as the High Priest. He comes as the Father of the Age to Come. Everything's ready. Everything's ready. And this is the time where God is saying to us, are, are you ready for what I'm going to do? Because it's going to happen. So what does Our Lady do? Our Lady 73 years ago says to Bruno, time has now come to an end. It's not the end of the world. As everybody's going, oh, what are we going to do? The only one that's upset with this is the devil. His kingdom is kaput. What's coming is the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And God is inviting us to participate in this. This is glorious. And he's giving us the way and the how this is going to happen. He put it in a book for us. He gave it to us very clearly. And this to me, is what scripture says. When the spirit of truth comes, he'll reveal to you all truths and will remind you of everything that I have said. What's everything that Jesus said? It's everything he said to Louisa. It's in a book. He will remind you of everything. And as we read this, as we study this, as we put this into practice, everything changes. Nothing's the same. Nothing can be the same. This is a, this is a glorious time to be alive. I mean, even the election. This is a lot of fun. Watching 
watching what's happening. This is just, this is really, the Lord has got a sense of humor. He really has a sense of humor. And you can see it by what's happening right this week. I mean, we can see these things. 523. 2, 12, 19, 28. After this, I was continuing my round. And again, that's what we want to learn. We want to learn how to pray our rounds. That's very, very important. And again, the main book that I would start with, if you haven't done it yet, is this, The Divine Attributes. After this, I was continuing my round in the creation to give to my creator all the homages of the divine qualities that each created thing contains because since everything came out of the divine fiat, Consequently, it maintains their life even more. It is the primary act of each created thing. So we're going to participate in this. This is what God is, this is why we're alive. To pose, this is what Jesus says. To possess by divine will is divine life, not human life. This is, this is what God is going to show us. He is going to perfect us so that we will have a humanity like the holy humanity of Jesus and the holy humanity of Mary. That's what's coming. Not this fallen, not this fallen nature where you have to go to confession each week. We've been redeemed, yes. But Jesus says, I've redeemed you to sanctify you, to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And that's the fulfillment of the Our Father. To possess my divine will is divine life that the soul carries out within herself. So everything that comes out of the soul in the divine will contains divine power, divine immensity, divine light, divine love. We try on God, feel her, our bilocating power. Again, this is the, this is the gift that Jesus told Louisa, the bilocation. That bilocating us places all our divine qualities and attitude and the soul offers them back to God as her own. This is, See, God's breathing this divine life in us, and we breathe that divine life back to God as our own. It's his. It's not ours. He gives it to us. What do, we, what do we give to God? The gift of gifts. We give it back to him. We give to God what is God's. As divine homage, worthy of the divine fiat that knows how to and can bilocate itself in order to call back the creature to the first act of creation, and that is, let us make man in our image and likeness. This is, this is glorious. Um, this is astonishing. All, all you can do is just, you know, glory, give glory to God for what he's doing. He's bringing about the new heavens and the new earth. He's bringing the new Jerusalem, and he's, he's asked us to be alive at this time. To breathe this in, to begin to live this abundant life. Jesus said to Louisa in Vine 24, he says that uh, the divine will happen as if by magic. All of a sudden, the kingdom will be here, and everybody's going to go, How did the kingdom of God come on earth as it is in heaven? And he said it happened because of Louisa and the souls linked to Louisa. That's our job. Listen to what he says. This is what he's asking us to do. He's asking us to go back to the beginning. He's asking us to begin to repair and redo in the name of everyone and everything, your family, your friends, your neighbors, everyone and everything, so that the kingdom can be established on earth as it is in heaven. 524, uh, 526, 19, 28. And all times, all the times, it calls you, Louisa, and us linked to Louisa, all the times, it's calling us to live in the divine volition. All, this Jesus is saying this to us. This is from the beginning of time. All the times it calls you, Louisa and us linked to Louisa, to live in its divine volition. Why? To make known to us God's divine qualities, God's divine power, God's divine joys, God's divine immense riches. What, what are they? They are many pledges that it gives to Louisa and to the little children of the divine will linked to Louisa, with which it assures us of its coming upon earth. The kingdom of God is going to come upon earth as it is in heaven. It's, why can you, how can you be sad? How can you be 
worried about anything. The kingdom's coming. We got to get ready. The kingdom is coming. So this is the end of part one. Part two will be on November 14th, and we'll end with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, it's done. Is he done? Sure. I wonder. <laughs> May the blood that poured upon the ruthless cross free us from our human will, that we live in God's holy divine will always. We ask this in Jesus' name, under the mantle of Mary, through the intercession of Louisa, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the blood that flowed upon this cross bless us, free us from our human will. And we pray and we thank God for all that uh, God is doing. And have a great uh, week, and we'll talk to you later. Dearest Lord Jesus, I thank you for your lessons of today. Free me from living one single instant outside of your will. Have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.